Hi guys, it's ASBYT and today's video is a long time coming. A lot of you guys have been asking for it and it's time to deliver. I've had the OnePlus 7 and OnePlus 7 Pro reviewers units now for well over a month. Time to give you my overall full review of both. Camera performance, battery life, and we're going to discuss everyday use. So after the buzz, after the hype, the good points, the bad points, the truth. So without further ado, let's get straight to it. Now straight away, this isn't going to be a specs laden video. If you want that information, go and see my original first impressions review video that I did on these two. So I have been flicking between the two over the last sort of month to five weeks. Predominantly, my SIM card has been in the Pro model, but I have had some solid use of the standard 7 as well. So straight away, let's talk hardware. So this point will certainly be subjective, but I found when using the two devices, I actually prefer the feel in the hand of the standard. 7 over the Pro because of the fact that I find the Pro too large. However, I've of course got small hands, so if you're someone like Marquez Brownlee for example, and you've got hands the size of the moon, <laughs> then you might actually prefer the Pro model. Another area of the hardware which is subjective is the curve versus flat display. I personally prefer the look of the curved display over the flat display, but again, because it is a larger phone, reaching right across with one hand is a lot more difficult on the Pro than the standard. And that kind of sums this area up. I've just found the 7 to be kind of easier to use. Now, in terms of durability and how they've kind of lasted over the five weeks or so, I have to report that on the whole, they've done great. I have found that I have a mystery scratch on the 7 Pro and nothing on the 7. Now it is the latest Gorilla Glass 6, so I was a little bit surprised, but to be honest, I'm really not careful with my devices. I don't use a case and I don't have any screen protectors. So of course, if you are doing that, you shouldn't really have any problems. Now in terms of camera, I have obviously really enjoyed using the wide angle lens on the Pro model, something that you of course don't have with the regular model. Wish they had included that in the video mode as well, but hopefully something like that might come in a software update. We have pretty much the same standard primary lens, apart from the 0.1 difference in aperture, and then the third lens on the Pro and the second lens on the regular are different as well. And that fact, to me, provide interesting results for portrait mode. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm a big user of portrait modes on smartphones, whether it's taking family photos or taking pictures of my little cat or just other stuff when I'm out and about and I want a nice photo for Instagram or Twitter. The point and shoot nature of a camera, the speed in which you can take a photo on the move is really important to me because there's nothing worse than trying to capture that moment and the camera shutter takes too long or there's too much motion blur and the moment's gone. Now, I've actually noticed for portrait mode, the 7 is actually easier to take a photo than the Pro. Largely down to, I would imagine, the fact that it is a depth sensing second lens compared to a three times optical zoom lens on the Pro. But it seems to focus and take the shot far easier, quicker and generally better on the standard than the Pro. On the flip side, we have the optical zoom. So if that's important to you, then of course go with the Pro. I found myself using the standard photo mode and not the portrait mode a lot more for those style of photos as well. And to be fair, whilst doing that, I have actually taken some really, really great portrait-esque shots with just using the standard mode on the Pro. And the shutter's far quicker, much snappier than using the portrait mode on here. With the brand new UltraShot algorithm, the cameras come with HDR plus and super resolution, meaning four times more detail in each pixel and extraction of key information from multiple photos to layer the picture with detail. Now, if we flip to the front, one of the big talking points, of course, with the Pro is that pop-up camera. It's durability. Would it allow water, fluff, all sorts in? Well, in terms of water on my initial review of this device i threw it in water for around 10 to 15 seconds and i've not had any problems since fluff has often managed to migrate its way underneath so when it pops up there's a lot of little flecks on there flex is that a flex of fluff 
it's not been detrimental to its performance at all and i'm not saying that front camera is unbreakable i can only go off of course my experience with it the actual front camera performance also seems to have stepped up from previous devices and you can create some stunning selfie shots the absence of a wide angle front facing camera like we've seen on the pixel 3 xl for example has been felt but at least we don't have that notch and really when you take into account the improvements in nightscape 2.0 the night mode that is on the oneplus 7 devices i found that while there are still of course things that they could improve on the cameras on both are very very good and whilst they wouldn't top my list for smartphone cameras every year they are getting closer and closer if you want more details on the camera quality as a whole video etc then check out my camera comparison video which i will leave listed and linked below because i go into it in far more detail now of course one of the big selling points about the pro model is the 90 hertz refresh rate display with its quad hd amoled panel there are no two ways about it it is one of the best displays on the market for sure bright vibrant truly immersive inside or outside whatever the weather it's a stunner 1080p panel 60 hertz drastically different no can you tell yes do i prefer using the pro display with that 90 hertz yes would i feel short changed purchasing the oneplus 7 probably not just because the oxygen os across all of oneplus devices has always been right up there as one of my favorite bits of software and it means that the 7 still feels incredibly snappy just not quite as smooth as the butter pro and with every new device that oneplus make the speed kind of increases with the 90 hertz now it kind of feels like we're at a point now where we're almost beyond the speed see what i did there <laughs> Also, another feature which I didn't mention in my first review is Night Mode 2.0. And simply put, they've been able to reduce the screen brightness down to 0.27 nits, which means eye comfort in nighttime usage becomes a lot better. And I can again say that I've found the screen brightness to be really, really good for nighttime use. Whack it down to the lowest possible setting and I found myself not disturbing my wife, which is always a good thing. No more elbows in the neck. Turn it off. <laughs> However... And, and there is a however with the fact that we have the 90 hertz quad hd amoled larger display and that is battery life now the capacity in the pro is 4000 mah compared to 3700 in the oneplus 7 so of course the pro model is going to give you longer battery yeah or, or, or so you might think because believe it or not when using both for prolonged use full day the 7 wins. The 90 hertz Quad HD larger display on the Pro hampers the battery compared to the regular. With both of them, I'm getting around 6 hours of screen on time, but the Pro is at the low end of that and the 7 is pushing towards, believe it or not, the 7 hour mark. Again, similar to the camera, whilst not being the best on the market for battery life, I think most people will be more than satisfied with how they perform. We have dash charge and warp charge on these two devices. The dash charge technology on a lot of OnePlus devices was already really, really good in terms of how quickly you could charge your phone. The Pro takes it to a whole new level with its warp charge and putting that into numbers generally it takes about half an hour to get to 50% on the 7, whereas on the Pro, it's about 20 minutes to get to 50%. Warp charge has really made my life on the road so much easier. I really have also enjoyed gaming on the OnePlus 7 Pro, especially again for that really immersive display with its improved haptic vibration, the RAM boost feature and the screen recorder feature as well. It's just been great. Obviously, with my involvement in esports, being able to record gameplay and audio slash commentary at the same time has been really really enjoyable to play around with and i'm really excited to see where this sort of feature can go in the future now in terms of audio we have stereo speakers on both one of the only real ways outside of color choices that you will probably be able to tell at first glance that this is a oneplus 7 and not a oneplus 6t we have the grill uh, just above that water drop notch we have a similar grill just slightly narrower on the pro and in terms of audio the speakers are certainly loud enough they're not the nicest sounding set of speakers that i've used but again they're certainly towards the top bracket and i personally don't really use 
the speakers that much on a smartphone, I tend to use earphones anyway. Software updates, I have had uh, quite a few really with both devices, and that is something that OnePlus can generally hold their head pretty high over. If you want the latest Android OS and you want it to be updated very regularly with security patches and performance tweaks and firmware updates, etc., then certainly OnePlus is a great company for that. In terms of unlocking my device, I still use the fingerprint sensor. I don't really use face unlock. And while slight, I have noticed an improvement from the 6T in terms of the fact that the sensor does have a larger surface area. So I found it almost impossible to misplace and not unlock my device. So they've done a really good job with that. And as you would expect for OnePlus, speed is paramount and again for optical sensors they are pretty much the fastest on the market. In terms of face unlock, while it has been rapid on both, I've actually used it more on the OnePlus 7. It feels marginally quicker on the regular, but speed isn't the problem with the Pro. It's simply the pop-up mechanism, as whenever you accidentally touch the screen or knock it and the phone senses that you're actually picking up and might want to unlock it, the camera obviously pops out. And if you're not trying to unlock your phone, that can be a little bit irritating. As a result, I actually switched it off on the Pro and haven't really used it since. Not a deal breaker, just better on the 7. Now something I didn't touch on in my first review was the Zen mode feature and that's probably because I thought at the time I wouldn't really use it and I can safely say that it's still the same. Don't get me wrong, I like the idea but unfortunately I tend to ignore most people's health advice for me and I'm certain that it will one day come back to bite me in the bum. If you want to stay healthy and look after your body mentally and physically, then Zen Mode is a great feature. It shuts down your phone for 20 minutes so that you can't actually physically use it. So if you just want a break and you find yourself always just reaching for your phone when you don't really need to, then again, use it and don't be abu don't abuse it. No. So if you're watching this wanting to know whether to buy one of these two devices, ah, just drop the pro on my foot. <laughs> That's a big phone to drop on your foot. Should you buy one of these two devices? And if so, which one? Starting with the regular, yes, there have been improvements to the SoC, 855 from 845, stereo speakers now on the 7, upgraded camera, not night and day from the 6T, but it is improved. It's a harder one to recommend if you have the OnePlus 6T. If you don't have the OnePlus 6T, if you're on the 6, the 5, the 3, whatever, or a different manufacturer altogether, then yes, I can, of course, strongly recommend the OnePlus 7 because of the fact that they capped the price again. You do get, again, a lot of phone for the money. And hey, if you update your phone every six months, it is still better than the 6T. Now, the Pro, on the other hand, is a bit of a different beast altogether, and not just beast because it's such a large display, but with the Pro, OnePlus have changed their philosophy, in my opinion, altogether. No longer are they solely a company that is a flagship killer, providing high-end specs for a mid-range price. They are going for this high-end flagship market now. Yes, this device is still cheaper than most of the competitors in and around this area, but it's certainly no longer mid-range. And because it's no longer mid-range, there are now certain expectations that come along with that. And the two glaring ones for me are, of course, the absence of the IP rating and the absence of wireless charging. Now, while me, pers while me personally, that's not good English, <laughs> While neither affect me personally, I don't really like using my phone in the bath and I don't really use wireless charging, but, and this might be an area that OnePlus might want to look at for the next device, there are thousands upon thousands of people who do use wireless charging and for them it is paramount. So even though it's not as quick as the wired charging, it is still an important feature for a lot of people that this lacks. And if OnePlus claim to be the brand of the people, I don't think they've ever said that, but they, they kind of imply that they, they listen a lot to customer feedback, that's gotta be something that they address with the next device. Again, I very rarely use wireless charging, but the world's a lot bigger than me, and a lot of you guys do. I love what they've done. I love that OnePlus are looking to a new area as well. As long as they keep their roots and they keep the standard device for that style of consumer, I love the fact that they're trying something new. Are there elements to this phone that are industry leading? Yes, I think there are. Are there areas that they could work on that don't quite make the grade? Yes, there are. But again, even though it's more expensive than the regular, for the price, 
I think it's a really, really good deal. Once again, when you look at the prices and you look at the two end products, I can't help but feel OnePlus have hit the nail on the head again. But like I said before, I am just one man. And I wanna know what you think in the comment section below. What do you think of the OnePlus 7 regular? What do you think of the OnePlus 7 Pro? Are they significant upgrades from last year to warrant you shelling out more of your hard earned cash? And hopefully I will be able to get my hands on the OnePlus 7 Pro 5G model as well. And I can do some comparison tests between the two to again, let you know where your money is better spent. As always, these videos do take quite a long time to create for you, so if you did enjoy it, make sure you drop a like down below for me, right next to the subscribe button, which of course you can do if you want to be updated every time I post a video on OnePlus, or smartphones in general, or tech in general, pretty much daily content here on YouTube. I'll love you and leave you. I'll see you in the next one. Says BOT, peace out.